Uh, I believe in the last Zoom call that we had, you said that because of having so many new faces on the team compared to this time last year, that you wanted the July practices to be more structured uh, compared to the way they usually are. Can you uh, touch on that and how that uh, vision actually became reality in those uh, practices? Yeah, we, uh, we, we stick to uh, you know, a traditional skill, you know, uh, July session and, and focused on getting better offensively. And as the month of July continued to build, we, we gravitated more towards team oriented drills and, and working on some of our, our foundation drills defensively and, you know, talked about rebounding a lot more and uh, actually treated the last week of the program like we were building up to play a game, which is, you know, the first time I've done that in the summer. And uh, we were able to split the group uh, and do an intra-squad scrimmage on Saturday. And we had officials uh, there. Um, so we kind of treated it like a, like a game. And uh, so I think you get a lot from that. And, and we got some film to look at and, um, and, why, and see which combinations of guys are performing well together and, uh, and just have a better you know, idea and understanding of what the team is going to look like in the fall. Yeah. Hey, Bobby, um, building off that a little bit. So last year, obviously things were different. I think that's been said probably 2000 times the word different. We're kind of sick of that word, but coming off that now having this full off season, what lessons have you learned and how have you changed as a coach as you're building this team heading into the season? Well, I mean, I, I've had to adapt to change and, and it hasn't only been, you know, with our roster I've had, I've had, uh, you know, some coaches, uh, you know, take other, other jobs. And, um, and so I've, I've just been, you, you have to adapt to that change and be flexible. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm just kind of learning about the team. I spent the summer just really evaluating, you know, teaching, you know, seeing what our team might look like. Um, and it's, it's been a, it's been a pleasant group to, to be around and work with day in and day out. Hey, Bobby, hope you're doing well. Sorry, I couldn't get myself unmuted. <laughs> um, so the name, image, and likeness stuff was wondering kind of how you're approaching it, what you're telling guys, how much you guys have uh, already had discussions about it um, in the last month here, and probably before that, I'm sure. Yeah, when the legislation came out, I think the administration did a good job with uh, just – having compliance come in and, and just let the guys know, you know, what they can do. And, um, you know, it, it is, uh, it feels like a free enterprise for our guys to be able to go out and explore, you know, where they could, uh, you know, possibly earn some money. And um, so I, I think it's, you know, it's pretty wide open in terms of what they, you know, what they can do. And, um, you know, we just wanted to provide just uh, you know any support that we could with, with, with the guys and just uh, making sure we're logging any anything that, that our players are involved with uh, through a compliance standpoint so that so that we you know we're not jeopardizing anyone's eligibility but I do think that there's a lot more freedom for our players to you know explore a variety of ways that they could you know earn some money if I could follow real quick um, do you do you like it as for college sports in general? And, and have you thought about what that might have looked like for a 19, 20 year old Bobby Hurley at Duke? Well, I mean, I think that there's more options, uh, you know, with social media and, and, and things that, you know, Instagram and different ways that, that our players can, uh, can capitalize on that. And I'm, I'm certainly in favor of it. And, you know, I think that it's an education for them too. As some of these guys are going to be playing at the next level, they have to learn about, you know, paying their taxes if they earn any money. And so we're going to be providing a lot of services for our guys to be able to handle, you know, these potential business opportunities. So I think it's, it's a part of the college process to educate and, and prepare our guys for the real world. And I think this is, uh, they'll get a small taste of that, you know, through NIL. Hey coach. Um, with Marcus Bagley returning for a sophomore season, what kind of growth are you looking for from him in terms of uh, role and in terms of just his skill set? Yeah, I was. Uh, you know, we were super excited to uh, to hear the news, and uh, you know, I, I stayed in touch with Marcus uh, periodically. You know, through his pre-draft experience, and it's a it's a grueling process going through that. Um, so he uh, you know, worked out for a bunch of teams and. 
you know, he, he made a decision that, that uh, you know, he felt was best for him. And he truly loves Arizona State. It's not just lip service. You know, he, he lives it with, uh, with his decision making and wanting to come back and, and be a part of, uh, of a successful season next year. And as much as he's thinking about the next level, he wants, he wants the true experience of, of playing at Desert Financial with a big crowd and under somewhat of a normal environment and, uh, and, and have an, an opportunity to win. And I think we've, uh, we've surrounded him with a team that I think is, is going to put him in a better position to, to experience those things this year. But I, I mean, I, I visualize him having a, a, a certainly a, a bigger role and a bigger um, uh, influence on our offense, particularly. And, and he's going to be working hard this off season to, to try and put together an all conference type season. Hey, coach, good to see you. Yeah, coach, good to see you. Um, I mean, you talk, you touched on the coaches and obviously the new players. I know with the one and done, it's changed. But, I mean, in your years of coaching, have you ever had an overhaul of a lineup this much? And I know you said with the scrimmage, how do you feel that it, it is early, but the chemistry is coming along, not just with the, the other players, but with you, with your new coaches as well? Yeah, I, I, I like it. You know, overall, it's been, a, again, a really positive summer. I, I think the group genuinely enjoys competing and working together every day. So that makes it that makes it better for sure. But it's, uh, you know, the court uh, in terms of watching the scrimmage, just again, I touched on the size of our team. It's 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 way different than last year and and even prior to that the year prior, just with with more size, more length. Um, you know, we got a guy, Enoch Bioche, who's who's got a 7-4 wingspan. We have, you know, Jalen Graham's got a 7-2 wingspan. Uh, Lonzo Gaffney's got a 7-3 wingspan. So you have all these uh, these guys that have more length and more size. And, you know, even our perimeter, um, we talk about Marion Jackson has got good size and strength and Jay Heath and, um, you know, Luther. So, I mean, we have a number of guys that, you know, I think give us, uh, you know, a more imposing team. Uh, I'm certainly going to be looking forward to going out before the games and in, in pregame warmup again and, and watch uh, layup lines because uh, I think at times last year I, I was scared to death when uh, I had to go out and, and see, you know, just what we looked like in the warmups compared to what our opponent looked like. So I think that'll be, a, you know, an, an instant, instant gratification for me, knowing that, you know, we do have that size. Um, you know, working with Joel Justice and Jermaine Kimbrough have been great. These guys are, uh, are pros. Uh, have come from winning cultures, winning programs. So it's been exciting for me to, to get, you know, some fresh ideas. And um, so I'm, I'm enjoying, you know, those guys so far. I've done a great job. Thanks, Coach. Yeah. Uh, coach, thank you so much for your time. Uh, I just was wondering if I could um, hear your thoughts. It, obviously, ever since 2020, it seems like the word adjustment has been the name of the game for, for everybody. And I was just wondering for, for this upcoming season, what are the main adjustments that you're going to be looking for with this largely new group that you're going to be having on the floor um, come this next season? Yeah, I mean, I, I like our team. Again, I like, our, the, you know, everyone kind of likes their team in July, I guess. But the, the, the mixture of, of some youth and, and some experienced guys that have, you know, have, have been productive and, and some other schools that have transferred in, that, that are excited to try and win and, and be a part of that. And, you know, Kamani Lawrence and Luther and, and Jalen Graham. And, uh, you know, those guys are, are hungry too, coming off of last season. So, you know, I think we got a right, you know, pretty good chemistry right now. And uh, I'm enjoying what I'm seeing. The guys had a great summer. You know, we have to get better on defense and, and rebounding. And those were two things that, that we were not good at last year. Uh, we were good at stealing the ball, but we couldn't we couldn't rebound successfully. And I just again the the size and the physicality of our team will you know is, is different than last year. And I think that'll that'll impact both of those areas for us in a positive way. And then if I can follow up on that question, do you think that there's any main things that you can take away from last season to bring into uh, this upcoming season to improve to and to get better well i mean it's not it's not last year was not Man, we lost prior, year. prior two years so uh, really it would have been three years in a row of going to the tournament so last year was nothing like that for us so you know everyone should be a little pissed off and and have a chip on their shoulder so that's that's what i'm hoping i and i thought our workouts all summer reflected that and we were 
you know, super competitive. And, you know, if, if Jalen Graham was the best player in the gym one day, then, you know, I could count on Luther Muhammad trying to get after him the next day and, and you could go right down the line. So, and, and the new guys, you know, came in with the right attitude and the right approach. So um, I think the main thing for us is you got to, you know, play pissed off and play with a chip on our shoulder. Thank you. Bobby, sort of a two-parter. Um, how much of an impact do you think that Enoch and Alonzo could have um, right out of the gate? And uh, do those guys provide you with the ability to match up in, in, in ways that you haven't been able to in the past and do different things with their lineup? Yeah, I think with, uh, with Enoch, you know, I, I had a few weeks with him. And then he, he had a minor knee issue that we, we had to back off and, um, and he's getting back and he's close to, uh, to, to starting up again. So he, he, he didn't participate in the scrimmage, but, you know, Gaffney was in there and both of those guys have those, those wingspans I talked about. They could challenge shots around the basket. Um, they could, they're both lob threats. I think we got, you know, we have three guys that are going to be viable options to throw the ball up above the rim and, and, and those guys could all, all go finish with Enoch and Jalen Graham and, uh, and Alonzo. So I think uh, rim protection and rebounding, those guys will, will help us uh, in, in those ways for sure. And then just, sorry, go ahead, Chris. Go ahead. Yeah, just, um, do you feel like you're gonna have more versatility and flexibility with matching up and how you can use your roster this year? I, I believe because we're bigger, I think we're, we're a little more interchangeable. So, you know, defensively, I think that'll, that'll be a positive for us. We'll be able to switch a little bit more and um, just, you know, it, we could be pretty unique with some lineups that we can, you know, put on the floor. So there is, there is a lot of roster, you know, versatility and, and, and we're way deeper than, than our team was last year. I think also, you know, from an offensive standpoint, I think we'll be a lot more balanced, uh, you know, it's not like uh, you're going to be able to load up on one guy or two guys. I think we have a number of guys that are capable of scoring. There may not be, you know, one particular guy that's a standout in my mind. I couldn't really tell you who who would be the leading scorer next year, but I could see, you know, a number of guys scoring at, at a good clip. And uh, but I but I know defensively is where, you know, the roster has made strides uh, with with the size and the length that we've added to the team. Uh, you mentioned uh, just being pissed off uh, about what happened last year. Just on the Bobby Hurley pissed off meter, one from 10, how, how high did, do you get on that, uh, just being upset over how things ended last year? Well, I mean, I, I carry it with me. Um, and, and, you know, I certainly, you know, want to get the program back to where the direction we were going. And, and uh, you know, last year was, was, was extremely difficult to go through and, you know, I, I tried to, to bring the energy throughout the summer to uh, to express my feelings on that, uh, how we're not, you know, we're not going to go through another season like that. And um, so I, I think the message was delivered and sent. And, you know, I think we had a, you know, a really good summer and I haven't, you know, had to get after them about their effort and, and, you know, how they're competing because they've been really, really consistent about doing that up to this point. You're, you're always a competitor. Uh, you've been that way throughout your entire basketball life, but does it feel different going into the season, coming off a disappointing season? Does it feel different for you? I mean, I always feel like I've always been the underdog when, you know, when I played and people doubted me and, and certainly um, you could look at last year and say, wow, you know, these guys had, you know, all this hype about them and, and they, you know, they failed, but I, um, you know, I take that very personal and, and, you know, we've worked extremely hard to change our roster in the off season. It's probably as hard as I've worked, you know, on the phones and recruiting and since I've been here and, and uh, you know, we've had a lot of change, but I, I think it's been a breath of fresh air. Just, you know, just again, being in the gym with these guys all month and it's been, you know, it's been a real positive, but I, I think that I have guys, you know, on the roster that, that play with that chip on their shoulder too. And, and, and that's, uh, that's been exciting because, you know, these guys are talking and communicating. Marion Jackson is, Luther is every day. If someone's not holding up to the standards that, that, we, that we believe in as a program, then, you know, we're not looking the other way. We're holding each other accountable. So I, I really like the group.
Bruce Pasco, you're next, and then Zach, and then Jordan. Hey, Bobby, when you when you talk about the chemistry being good now or, or maybe better, I didn't know if part of last season, as you're talking about, was uh, chemistry off a little bit, maybe because you had so many similar guys, maybe with similar uh, agendas or, or or thoughts or whatever, you know, in light of that. I mean, is it is that part of it? Just what you have now may maybe a little more um, uh, team cohesive or whatever, whatever you call it. Yeah, I mean, I just think, you know, last year we we, uh, we we got a touch impatient throughout the year. It was hard to, to manage that all the time offensively. And and then defensively, you know, we were fast and we were, you know, we had some small guys that could fly around, but, you know, and we could steal the ball defensively, but we really couldn't get consistent stops with any kind of physicality in the paint. And, and uh, you know, I think that that was the main thing we tried to address through recruiting and, and, and I think that's been a positive change. And I just, again, I look at a group that, that, is, that is working together, that is playing unselfish, that is kind of playing the right way on both ends. And, and it seems like a, a group of people that enjoy each other. So mm -hmm. that's, uh, that, that's good. You know, I mean, just people that truly, you know, like competing together and, and, and go at each other and, and are talking, you know, and, and making the workout really dynamic. And then afterwards they're, they're going over the whole thing. Like, Hey, did you see, you know, so it's, it's good to, to see that cohesiveness and, and, a, and a little bit of team bonding and chemistry that, that, that I'm watching. In addition to just, I think us being a more balanced team, just at both ends of the floor. And I was wondering how the, the process, uh, if you could reflect on that a little bit, how you got here and what the spring has been like. I don't know if you feel like this is the norm for considering the portal being what it is today and, and transfers being unlimited almost. Uh, uh, do you expect this kind of transition a lot at, at, at programs like yours? And how is it like for you to deal with it this spring, especially when you had guys like Remy and Alonzo testing the, the, the draft and then coming back, but then transferring? I mean, it just seems like a lot, lot going on that you had to keep an eye on. Yeah, I just think it kind of, you know, it wakes you up and, and, and just lets you know, like expect the unexpected, uh, you know, just be prepared. Uh, don't don't anticipate anything. I mean, just you you have to expect the unexpected and be prepared for it. And you know that's why we're we're kind of we're gonna have to project out. Hey, what's the team gonna look like next year? What you know, which guys you know do you think are gonna try and go pro, or which guys you know may not be as happy in their role? If you're noticing things like that during the season, then you better start getting ready for it because you know the players have more rights and more options and. And certainly, uh, you know, I'm in favor of that. And each year, if I have to work the way I work this spring, then then I'm fine with that. I'll, I'll. Uh, but certainly, you know, as from a program standpoint, you do like continuity and guys that that grow and build, you know, through your program. So we're hoping that that we can continue to do that as well. So I'm, you know, I, I don't think it's going to change dramatically. I think this is something that coaches all across the country are going to be dealing with on a year in and year out mm -hmm. basis. Thanks. Yep. Bobby, just two short questions here. One, <clears throat> I know uh, two years ago, I think it was rained out and last year, obviously COVID, but do you have any update for us on the awaited return of Mill Madness? Yeah, we're, uh, we're, we're in discussions about that at the moment. Nothing is, has been decided and we're, we're still, sorry, light just went out here. So um, anyway, um, <laughs> We're, uh, we're, we're, dis we're discussing things with our administration and we'll, you know, I should have some more information on that in, in a few weeks, but we're, we, we are exploring that possibility. And, and secondly, what's it like coaching your son? Is that something you've done before? Uh, it's, it's been fun. It's been great having him. He's, he's a hard worker. Um, I catch myself asking him, Hey, what do you think of this guy? Like during practice, if he's not in the drill and, so I, I've done that because that's what we do at the house. You know, we're constantly watching games together and stuff. So it's great. I mean, I have that bond with him and um, I'm sure on the road trips, he's going to come in handy because he's a calming influence on me and just having him around is really, you know, it's been a blessing. It's, uh, you know, such a great thing. So he's been good. And, and uh, so I appreciate you asking. I do have to uh, tell you, we discussed, uh, He's got to call me coach, you know, in the gym. So we got that one, that one figured out. Um, just have to make that distinction, you know, between the household and, 
and, and the core. Hey, Coach, uh, going back to name, image, and likeness stuff, I know for ASU football, Jane Daniels has his own pizza, and we're seeing some other deals come about. Is anyone on your team close to getting any of their own pizza or anything similar to that? And uh, if not, who do you think would have the most creative pizza on their team? I'm probably going to stay away from the second part of your question, but I will answer the first part. Um, I, I, you know, I think the guys are out there and, and we've had a few guys uh, able to get uh, some deals locally and, and, and certainly Instagram is, is another avenue for, for some of guys that have, that have, uh, have that type of following. And I'll let you guys, when you have access to talking to them, share how much they want to talk about that. I don't think I want to, uh, disclose any of, of their entrepreneurship uh, right now with you guys. But uh, when you guys are talking with our players and, and they want to discuss that, I'm, I'm wide open to, to allowing that to happen. Coach, it looks like you're going to have fans back at DFA this season. And last season, just seven and six at home. Talk about how much of an emphasis winning at home is in the locker room and how much you're looking forward to having fans back in the stadium. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a huge advantage, especially the last couple of years, the way our fans have turned out. It's been unbelievable. So look, uh, excited to get back to that environment, hoping that we could do some some damage early in the season to to get some momentum for, for our crowds again. And, you know, excited about our schedule and playing some of those games. We'll play in the Bahamas, starting off with Baylor and, and, and like Doug touched on with San Diego State and Creighton on the road and, you know, get some really solid games. So, Hopefully we could, uh, you know, give everyone a reason to want to be there. And uh, but last year, again, it was different. I think our players wanted to get away. <laughs> you know, they wanted to go somewhere. So, you know, kind of home court advantage wasn't really the same. Uh, and, and certainly with no fans, I think kids were genuinely excited to get out of wherever they were and travel a little bit and have an opportunity to play in, in a different environment. <laughs> Hey, Bobby, how are you? Um, just uh, curious, the way the season ended last year, what did you do when the season was finally over and you were able to get away for a little bit? Uh, how did you recharge your battery? How did you kind of get yourself over last season? Yeah, I mean, I just took a, a couple of days and, and really didn't, didn't do much with basketball. I, I kind of watched uh, my brother compete in the Big East tournament and they went pretty deep and then just watched how the Pac-12 unfolded with those last couple of games. And then, you know, the extent of it for me was just getting maybe mad watching, seeing, uh, not that I was unhappy for the, for the league. I think it's great that we won the way we did in the tournament, but, but, but not being a part of it uh, kind of hurt. So just, uh, just followed that and then just really got, got into the transfer portal right away as, as guys were starting to go. And I knew that our team would, would be a lot different coming into this year. So we had to be proactive uh, to do that. So that's kind of how we focused on, on the off season, but it was, it was a lot more than. than oh, you are? Year in terms okay. of work. Hey, just, just as a quick follow-up, since you mentioned uh, watching your brother play and um, things like that, as I'm seeing a beautiful picture of Richard Sines on the screen right now, um, just wondering what, what do you and Danny talk about uh, when you're talking basketball? What, what kind of conversation is that? Well, I mean, we kind of live and, live and die each other's programs in addition to, our, to my program here. And you know, I'm, I watch UConn as much as, as probably anybody. <laughs> Just uh, and 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 he's the same way with us. So we we constantly share different thoughts about our teams and kind of it's like uh, therapy sessions for both of us sometimes, depending on you know who's doing well or who's not, and and you know we're able to to have each other kind of going through the same thing. So it it makes that uh, you know helpful to have someone you know that's uh, doing exactly what you're doing. So it's it's great communicating with Dan, talking about uh, basketball with him throughout the year. We going to see a UConn U ASU game anytime soon? Well, they're in the Bahamas. I hope that you see it, uh, you know, in in the championship game and in the Atlantis. That's that would be, you know, that's my goal, and I'm sure it's it's Dan's goal. And we've we've avoided playing each other. We don't. We wouldn't want to play each other unless we're playing for something really important. So, my fingers crossed on that then. Yeah, coach, you, you talked about, you know, getting away and, and traveling. How much does that 
do for the camaraderie of the team because it's just you guys kind of together and, and away from from everything yeah well we haven't done a lot yet as far as this summer we, we guys have been on campus and and kind of moving around normally but uh you know our coach and staff traveled quite a bit through july just doing the summer recruiting but um if you're referencing during the season i think it was especially in COVID, our, our guys loved the opportunity to to get out of their own environment and travel and and just see some place that was different i'm sure we all felt that way at times through the pandemic so i think that was a real positive anytime we were able to to get on the road so michelle doug holler gabe yeah bobby uh, obviously Burrow was your trusted associate and sitting friend when had been with you like every day since you've been in tempe what's it been like with a new coaching staff kind of establishing that kind of camaraderie uh, divvying up the work details and just kind of, you know, working with a completely new unit around you. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, Rashawn was obviously, we're very close and we still are and, you know, talk all the time and, you know, he's, his head's spinning a little bit building his program. Uh, I still have his son Micah here. So I do have a, you know, a connection yeah. to, to the family still in the program, uh, which is great. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's a learning experience with me and, and the new you know new staff members getting to know them and vice versa. And um, but I, I think it's it's gone very well. I think you know both Joel and Jermaine have, have brought a lot to the table already, and and we've connected real well. And um, again, they just have different perspectives, and I could be inquisitive about asking questions about you know how did you know how would Coach Cal have done this, or you know talking about you know, Loyola Chicago and the, and the great, you know, runs that they've had the last couple of years. So it's been great having those guys. And they're both, like I said, they're both pros. They check all the boxes in terms of being very good on the court, great in recruiting and, and, and relate very well to the players. So I'm excited about my staff and, and the changes that we've made. As a, as a follow-up to that, can you, can, can it kind of be good in some ways to bring new voices in? because you can be comfortable with the same old same old that you had but just kind of bring new voices in yeah i mean i, I both i think both joel and jermaine have been terrific and it's uh you know it's been a real you know again a real blessing to have them i certainly would under ideal conditions i would love to have Rashawn here you know i miss that guy we you know we were so close and uh you know we were really connected about our vision you know for the program um but I'm happy he's a head coach and he's moved on. But it's it's uh, it's certainly these guys have done a great job. Uh, again, just building relationships, even with our returning players. They're really invested in the kids and and, and wanting to see our, our program advance. So you know, it's been it's been a real positive. So far. Bobby, when you when you introduced Guard U uh, back during Shannon and, and Trey and Cody's days, everyone loved it. Uh, last year when you guys were getting out rebounded. Everyone seemed to blame the, that slogan on uh, the disappointment. Do you do you regret labeling your, your your program that? Is it still a thing? Where where do you stand on on the guard? Do you think? Well, I mean, I I, I think that we're going to be able to recruit really good guards. You know, we we have you know, we have a track record of doing that with Trey Holder and Shannon Evans and Remy Martin and. Lou Dort and Josh Christopher. I mean, we've had a number of high level guys in the program. So you know, I'm not going to run from that, but I do, I do know the importance of, of rebounding and shot blocking and, and, and getting more balanced to, to what you're doing. So I, I think that that's been, you know, kind of the, you know, what I felt like was our, was some of our bigger flaws last year was our, was just our size and our inability to rebound and, and get stops uh, in the half court defense. And I think some of that was we physically, you know, we were too small. So that was the priority in the transfer portal and through recruiting high school players to bring in more size, more rebounding, more shot blocking. And, um, and I think we've done that based on what I'm, you know, watching here over the last month. And one last thing, uh, with Lou doing well in the NBA with Josh going, being a first round pick, you know, Marcus is, projected to do uh, pretty well. What, just what does that attention mean for the program that you're getting guys into the NBA and in the first round of the draft? Yeah, I'm just, you know, a dream come true for Josh. And I think he was, you know, he was always, you know, destined to, to, to be that guy and be a guy. And I, I truly believe that, you know, he didn't have, you know, a, 
kind of a normal off season chance to train normally. I think his season could have been even better. Um, and, and he's going to do fantastic, but you know, it's amazing how many kids on the phone, you know, love Josh Christopher, you know, talk about Josh Christopher. You know, I say, yeah, I you am. Know, what do you know about Arizona state basketball? Like, you know, Josh Christopher, you know, Marcus Bagley comes up quite a bit as well. So, you know, it's great when you have those guys, you know, out there and, you know, they're, you know, they're living their dream and just looking forward to, uh, to go into Vegas, to go into summer league and, and seeing those guys uh, play. You know, we're going to have Zylan Cheatham is going to be there and, and Rob Edwards. So just having a number of guys, you know, either playing at a high level in Europe or, or in the NBA certainly helps with everything, helps with recruiting, and it's what you want for your players. Yeah, Bobby, you've had plenty of success, obviously, personally in your career at Duke, and, and that has kind of shaped the way that you see the floor in your point guard position and enabling the trust that you give your guards. Um, with DJ and with Marion and Jay and the new guys coming in, how do you build that relationship to trust them to run your offense and at the same time kind of learn from – and, and do you change it all based on last year and the freedom that you're giving your guards? Yeah, I just, uh, again, I talked about balance. I, I think that certainly, you know, Marion averaged 18 points a game. DJ was 14 points a game. Jay was 14 points a game. I, I don't know where those numbers are going to, how they're going to project out. It's kind of too early to tell. But I just, I, again, I, I see guys that are playing the right way, playing unselfishly, you know, making the right extra pass um, that are competitors, and, and, you know, are pretty well-rounded. I mean, Marion is a, a really well-rounded, mature, uh, you know, point guard guy that can rebound the position as good as any guard I've had. He's going to, you know, he's going to be able to, you know, get defensive rebounds at that position. And uh, he, he made some big shots too in the scrimmage. You know, he seems like he's got a knack for making shots late in games. Uh, that's what he did at Toledo. And I would think he would, you know, replace some of, you know, what Remy did in that regard for us this year. But uh, overall, I just think you, you touched on a couple of guys that have had great summers, the guys that you mentioned, and, you know, there are others. This is, you know, probably as deep a team as I've had, you know, since I've been here. Hey, Bobby, uh, I was wondering, I was actually going to ask you about the perimeter guys. You touched on a couple of them there, but just um, you know, some of the new guys you've had coming in, what's your impressions of them throughout the, the summer workouts and, you know, what, what you have there um, and, and also how Luther is doing physically at this point, too. Yeah, I mean, Luther, I actually had to uh, tell him like two weeks ago, like, you know, maybe back off a little bit. Like I thought I could have put him in a Pac-12 game the, the next day. I mean, he's in that good of shape and his game is in that good of shape. And, you know, he's had, you know, some dominant days in the gym just in terms of how he's how he's uh, handled his business on the court. Um, you know, Marion brings great energy, leadership, uh, you know, plays both ends of the floor extremely hard. Uh, Jay Heath could could really score in multiple ways. Um, you know, DJ is, is very good at creating his own shot as well. I think we, you know, we've replaced some of what we lost from a, from a scoring punch standpoint. Mm -hmm. um, Jemiah Neal has had a, has had a positive time. He got here late, finishing up academic stuff, but he's had a positive impact on what we're doing. I think he's got a real future. Um, Justin Rochelin could really make shots. He's, he's he's had an impact doing that, you know, in our workouts. So, you know, there've been a you know, been a lot of guys, you know, that have made a strong impression this summer and. Just, again, excited about the balance and the depth of the roster overall. Hey, Bobby. Obviously, Kamani finished last year so strong. How do you expect him to build on that this year? And how is he handling the responsibility of being, obviously, by far the longest tenured guy with the team as well? Yeah, Kamani is, uh, you know, he's been vocal. He's been a, he's been a great leader. He's, he's kind of, he went through the same thing I did last year. So he knows how it felt and this is his last year and he wants to make the most of it. And that's how he's worked. He's been a great example for the young players coming into the program. Uh, the loyalty he showed the program by, you know, sticking through a tough year and, and coming back and, and wanting to make, uh, to make, you know, make it to the NCAA tournament again this year, have a great season. And he's taken all the necessary steps to do that. You know, he's, uh, I know he's focusing on a shot and we're working with him on that. That's something I think, uh, we were on to something with late in the season with his free throw shooting got a lot better. Um, but yeah, I, 
I anticipate him, you know, playing with that motor again, like he did the last 12 games of the season and, and providing that re that rebounding presence and just doing a little bit of everything for our team. But he's, uh, he's working hard and setting a great example for the young guys in the program. We'll go Paul Richardson and then Ethan Ryder. Coach, just two quick ones. One, obviously there are other kids that got drafted out of the Pac-12. So how do you see the Pac-12 stacking up this year with obviously lost the players for the draft and graduation or uh, and so forth? And then two, when the draft is going on, do, do you hearken back and still kind of get a little, a little feeling about, about back when you were drafted? Yeah, good question. Um, as far as the league, it's 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 a little bit early to tell in terms of. I mean, I think we're all hoping as uh, you know, across the board to take advantage of the momentum that was generated through the success of a number of teams in the program last year. So we want to build on that as as a conference. Um, and I mean, they're the obvious ones. The so UCLA brought back most of their team and. You know, Oregon has has a way of you know replenishing what what they lose year in and year out and. I mean, I'm sure there's others that, that are going to be in the hunt. So um, the league is going to be good, I think. And um, as far as the draft, I mean, I talked to Josh the morning of the draft and just wished him good luck and, and the whole thing. And I just, I had butterflies all day, man. I just, um, I remember back to how, how it felt, you know, when you're waiting, you know, uh, I wanted to put like bubble wrap on myself just so I didn't get hurt or something happened, something crazy happened. And then I don't hear my name called. So it was like, I just remember all those feelings. So just excited for, you know, for Josh to experience that with his family. So I'm sure it was a, a great moment for them. Yeah. Hey coach, talking about the team, there's been such a large turnover uh, with talent with the transfer portal and players like Josh going to the draft. Do you see any sort of advantage for the couple of players that have been here already versus the new players coming in, or is it kind of a clean slate for everyone? I mean, I feel like it's a clean slate. I mean, I think I, I certainly, you know, appreciate, you know, Jalen Graham and Kamani Lawrence and Marcus Bagley and, and Luther all want to continue to be a part of it, you know, it's, and, and want to be a part of the solution, uh, you know, to what happened last year. So that's, you know, that makes me feel good that, that we've had that connection, you know, player and coach, and they have that trust. Um, and then, you know, I think everyone is just kind of getting acclimated. You know, I, I, the guys quickly, I think, you know, seemed to work well together and became cohesive. And, you know, the times they've been at my house this summer, it's been as loud as it's ever been in terms of having the whole team, everyone talking in different parts of the house. It's just feels like a group that, that, again, enjoys each other's company, that likes being around each other. So that's been very refreshing. All right. Yep. But, hey, I appreciate you guys, and it's good seeing everybody again, and enjoy the rest of the summer. And we're, uh, we're excited for, the, for the, a, no, a normal year and, and, and getting to see you guys in person here real soon. Thanks, Bobby. Thanks, Coach. Doug, do you want to – Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Bobby. Want? Doug Tamaro, do you want to? Uh, uh, on